Well, hey, greetings and salutations, guys. Welcome back to the channel for this. John Campia's open mic where you just step up to that big old mic. <laughs> open up your mouth. Get a wide girth on that mic and speak in your question and your yes. truth. As we are here to take your comments and questions and observations. That's what we're here to do. I'm joined here by uh, Ray Ora, who's got something on his head. I don't even know what that is. You got cow udder? The bunny, but what? It looks like you got cow nipples. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me take that off. <laughs> you were about to argue with me. Then you looked yeah, at it. It's like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I kind of right. see it. Also, uh, Jonathan Boyko is here. And most importantly, <laughs> you guys are here. Thanks for coming by this afternoon to hang out with us as we talk about the things you guys want to talk about here on open mic and there are two different ways you can get a common question or observation right here on the show uh, number one if you're not watching the show live like anytime 24 7 a question pops into your head at two in the morning you can just go to streamelements.com slash john campia slash tip and send in a tip question again anytime 24 7 or if you're watching live, you can send in a question right now using the Super Chat feature that's in the live chat. Now, the Super Chats are currently open, but we don't leave them open for long. So if you got a comment or question, go ahead and fire that in. All right. With that down, let's get to it, shall we? We're going to start off a little bit with this. You know, we've been talking about Transformers uh, Rise of the Beasts today because the first reactions for the movie came out. And we discussed it earlier on the channel, but it looks good. The, so far, the general consensus is, hey, this Transformers movie's not bad. I mean, not, you know, going to be top 10 movie of the year or anything like that, but that's fine by me. I Just tell me it's going to be good. Especially after the tripe that we've had in the Transformers franchise, other than Bumblebee, um, to just have the critics say it looks like it's pretty good. But the question remains, can it actually make any money? Because Transformers The Last Night, the final Michael Bay Transformers movie came out and it dropped the box office almost in half from what the previous movie did. And it was the worst, in my opinion, Last Night was the worst of the franchise. And then the Bumblebee movie, which came out a few years later, paid the price because everybody had given up on Transformers because they had just been shit for so long that they decided, nah, I'm not going to go. And, and Transformers was an awesome movie. It had in the 90 percentile for critic react for uh, critic reviews and stuff like that up in the 90s. That movie deserved to be an 800 million to a billion dollar film, but it ended up making like 467 million dollars because a lot of people had given up on Transformers. Well, Bumblebee was awesome. So could this new movie make any money? Listen, early on there wasn't much buzz. People were like, ah, oh, this one looks like another Michael Bay kind of movie, even though we knew Michael Bay wasn't directing it. Steve Cappell, who directed Creed 2, is directing it. But still, you know, a lot of people didn't believe. The trailers came out. I thought the trailers looked pretty good. Still, not really willing to believe that the movie was going to be any good. <laughs> then the newest trailer came out that they dropped at CinemaCon, and it's quite an excellent trailer. And I thought, well, maybe this can be good. Yeah, Unicron up in there. Mm -hmm. Why not? I like Anthony Ramos a lot. Loved him in In the Heights. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe it could be all good, but still some doubt, right? But the first reaction came out, they're saying, you know what, this movie's pretty good, but can it make money? Will people go out and see it? Now, the early projections, box office projections for opening weekend that came out of Box Office Pro were saying it was probably going to be between 30 and $40 million opening weekend, which for some movies, that's not bad, but for a big tentpole blockbuster like a transformers movie an expensive movie like transformers 40 million dollars opening weekend that's not good it, it i mean it could be worse but it's not good well as the new trailer came out some people started to revise those box office projections the buzz has increased and now deadline is actually saying they're projecting a 68 to $70 million box office opening. Still not great. Like Little Mermaid's about to beat that. But much better than a $40 million opening weekend. And if word of mouth can continue, and if the buzz and the reviews come out and they continue to be strong, who knows? Like maybe this opening weekend box office can trend upwards. Then after opening weekend, it's all about how good is the movie, Right. Marketing and buzz will set your opening weekend. Quality of your movie will determine the legs for the most part. Some, there's exceptions to that, but generally speaking. So will the movie be good enough to make a lot of money? Well, in terms of like com compare it, comparing it to Little Mermaid, 
yeah, it's not good. But comparing it to the opening of Bumblebee, it's very good. What was Bumblebee's opening? Twenty one million. Woo! So that's like tripled it. Then if the if it if it makes if what it does thing. come in about seventy, yeah. you're right. That's like more than tripling. Yeah. So the op- and listen, Bumblebee opened with twenty one million, went on to make four hundred and sixty seven. I mean, I'm not saying you can extrapolate that all no, the way, but, but I mean, if this movie can open with seventy million dollars, and then if it's as good as these first reactions are suggesting, then you might be looking at a movie that pulls in six hundred, seven hundred million dollars. And and I noticed the runtime is just a little bit below two hours, so that might help it too. One hour and fifty four. You get an extra show help. time every day yeah, compared to you. like a Mission Impossible. It's gonna be me. over two and a half hours. You're gonna get people like you that might go back to see repeated to be, times. Yeah, you have to be short in order for me to do a two theater run or right. Two Unless times. it's Batman, because you did a couple of viewings. Yeah, of Batman. but that was like that's more rare. Like, hey, I I want a job still. <laughs> Jonathan, what? I like I look. I know you're you're dubious about this film, understandably, completely understandably. But can this now that we've seen the, the latest marketing, now that we're looking at the opening weekend box office projections, now that we've seen the first reactions. Can can this Transformers movie make a legitimate amount of money to to call itself a hit? It's it all comes down to the fun factor. If you come in this in oh, that sounds weird. If you go into this theater, <laughs> <laughs> if you go into this theater and it feels like a slog getting through it and it's just bloated, uh, it's it's gonna have a great opening and then word of mouth is gonna fail it. But if if this thing is as good as everyone loved Bumblebee and they're saying they're actually taking all the good stuff from Bumblebee, what made Bumblebee great and amplifying that, then I actually think there could be a hit on our hands here with this. A big hit. Um, fingers crossed. I hope it's good because, God, I, I need... After Bumblebee, it's like, yes, this is what Transformers should feel like in the movie theater. Look, if the if if Transformers fans are so um, still uh, reeling from the after effects of the Michael Bay thing and the real Transformers fans don't show up to this movie, then... You might as well just sell off the franchise to someone else because that that means it's done. Yeah, no. Because all hardcore Transformers fans will go to every single Transformer movie. I have, even if I didn't like the one before. So we'll see. We'll see. It, it'll be interesting because it's, it's surrounded by a bunch of good movies. So now, yeah. not only do you have to be Big good, movies too, not just good, yeah, big movies. You have to be good along with them. You have to have that one thing that says, oh, so what, what do I want to watch again? Flash or Transformers? Oh, Transformers did this. Let's go see Transformers. Yeah, I am going to go see Flash oh, several times. <laughs> Flash I, I, is man, good. I, I might use all my reservations on three time tickets to Flash. All right, <laughs> guys. Question is for you here. What What do you think about this? I mean, the projections seem to be going north. They're going up for this Transformers. The reactions are good. I, I don't know. I think if you had asked a lot of us two months ago, what are the chances that Rise of the Beast can be a hit? I think we would have been a lot more skeptical today. Maybe a little bit more optimistic. What do you think about that? Can it be a hit? Whatever you guys think, jump into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. With that down, let's do what we're here to do, shall we? Hear from you guys. So let's jump over right now. We'll start off with the tip questions that you guys have sent in. So Jonathan, what do we got? All right, first we got Big Chungus who writes, John, notice you've stepped up your drip a lot lately, looking a lot more dapper. Why the change? No complaints. I love it. Just curious. I've explained this before, uh, but I'll <laughs> say it again, and, and it's this is 100% the truth. I have no fashion sense. I, don't, I barely know how to dress myself. There's many things in life I'm good at. Some things I am not. Dressing myself ain't it. I literally switched over to this type of outfit because it's faster and easier. There's a a line in uh, Crazy Stupid Love with Steve Carell and uh, Ryan Gosling where Ryan Gosling is explaining to Steve Carell, a man only needs seven things in his wardrobe to have a complete wardrobe. And it was like three shirts and two jackets, a pair of pants and shoes, whatever it was, right? And I realized, I took that to heart. Like I literally every day, I wasted time stressing about what am I going to wear? Even though I just dress like a hobo, according to your mom, Ray, oh. um, even though I just like a hobo normally, I still say, oh, what am I going to wear today? Do I wear this? Oh, does this shirt look stupid? You know what? Now I have five button up shirts. I have four jackets. I literally open my closet and it, I don't even have to think about it. I don't even look. I just grab one of my button shirts, grab one of the jackets. It, and it doesn't matter what combination it's in. I just grab whatever shirts there and whatever jackets there. I put it on and I'm out the door. Easy, 
Done. Finished. Wrong, yeah. I am literally dressing like this because I'm lazy. That is why I'm dressing like this, because it's faster and easier, and I don't have to think about it. So, yeah, I wish I could give you some other thing. I wish I could tell you I'm so fine and sexy that I needed to wear clothes that matched the level of my pure oh, sexual yeah. magnetism. Mm -hmm. But it... <laughs> That's right, John. Oh, I, saw, I stopped hearing. I stopped listening after you said something about sexy. Sorry. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> It was true, but no, 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 no. That's reality great. is I'm lazy. You know what? If that works for you and people think that you're dressing better, then keep doing it. Yeah. Hey, listen, I might re reach in the closet one day and accidentally grab one of my hoodies. Well, I'll just wear the hoodie that day. That's oh, fine. Oh, no. Now that but, you've gone but this now way, the, now you can't set go the bar. Back. Have you, I set the bar set now? a standard for yourself. Now, if you look stinky one day. Stinky? They're going to just call you stinky stinks. I'll, although, I will say this. Hmm. I will say this. You might want to plug your ears, right? Oh, it, no, but but in all honesty, uh, <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, like because I don't know if I look stupid when I try to dress myself. Where before I leave for <laughs> it's okay, Ray. Ray, it's okay. This isn't bad. Oh, it's I would literally before walking out the door go into Ann's office and say, "Do I look all right?" And she'll look at me and go, "Yeah, yeah, you look fine. Great." Then I'd leave, right? But now, when I dress like this and I go into her office, do I look okay? She looks at me. She goes. Oh, and then I'm like, that makes me feel good. Oh, okay, that's fine. She, that makes she me makes feel that good. noise too. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, Anne, when that. Anne's does, yeah, then I feel pretty good. So I get that's a little bit of the motivation, I think. So my it, my my wife seems to like it more. All right, what's next? Uh, Inalo writes in regards to one uh, to watch first: Oppenheimer or Barbie. I'll be watching Barbie first, so I can end my weekend with a bang. Oh yeah, yeah. Un I yeah, that's good for a Friday. Yeah, that's a good one. I might be the opposite. And the oh. reason I might be the opposite is because I have a feeling Barbie is going to be left on more of a fun high note. Like, I got a feeling and I'm going to walk out of Oppenheimer, which could very well be a best picture of the year. But I have a feeling I'm going to walk out feeling heavy. Brother, brother, Think like, brother. Oh. I'd rather walk out. I'd rather my last experience of yeah. the weekend be... Ha <laughs> ha! Like laughing with something with Barbie. So I might go Oppenheimer first and then Barbie second. That whole thing was just about that joke, baby. You don't even have to answer that question. What joke? Said, I didn't even know the joke. Bang. It What's was a joke. A nuclear bang. You know, Oppenheimer? It was a Oh, pun. my God. And the whole, yeah, see? Because I was like, <laughs> it's fright. No, I already passed it. I already passed it. It's good. It's I good. actually agree with John, though. I, I'd want to have the the Barbie, like, <laughs> palate cleanser after the deep, you know, Oppenheimer. It's like, oh, ugh. my God. I was waiting for you to go. Boo, and then you <laughs> nothing can go over my head. I'm too fast. That's okay. <laughs> okay. okay, what's next? Full Boyle writes Hi, John. Uh, I've never been to Canada, but I would like to go someday. Do you have any recommendations, places to go, food to eat, activity to do, <laughs> food et cetera? To, food to eat, like Canada is a three block radius. So, Canada. So, when um, I go to Canada, which block should I go? Yeah, to? which which street do I go down? So, Canada. Um, like Canada is like dwarfs the United States in size. It's a very, very big place and it's very diverse. Like you go to the one part of the East Coast, you're in a complete European French culture if you're in Quebec, which is bigger than Texas. You go a little bit over, you're in the heart of Ontario and Toronto, which I, Toronto I think is the most beautiful, wonderful metropolitan city in the world. Um, but you got that. You get into the mid provinces and you get a totally different feel when you get into Alberta and, and Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Then you go on the West Coast and Vancouver. You got that West Coast life out there. It's so wildly different. So, And they're thousands of miles apart. So I can't just say, well, if you're in Canada to do this, because it really depends where in Canada you go. It is a very dauntingly large country. So uh, it all depends on where you go. All right, what's next? Okay, it's cultural anxiety, stupid rights. Uh, it was asked, so I took a dive of 52 films in the Billion Dollar Club. Disney owns 30. The entire yeah. $2 billion club uh, in all-time lists. Disney owns 9 of the top 10 and 15 of top 20 and 8 of top 10 animations. Titanic and No Way Home are shared. How is this legal? Go Disney. Yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, too, I mean... Um, Avatar was not Disney for a while. I mean, it is Disney now, so Avatar that counts as a Disney That's thing. Right. I believe Jurassic World, one of the Jurassic World films, is like the only 
one in the top 10 that's not a I Disney so. yep. property yeah. or some, something like that, something crazy like that. I mean, listen, we often talk about Bob Iger and well, we should. And we often talk about Kevin Feige and well, we should. But I believe maybe the most gifted film executive ever um, he was the one who shepherded all the Marvel stuff, shepherded all the movies for Disney, the Pixar films, the Star Wars films, the Marvel films, the Disney picture films. And that's Alan Horn. Yep, the unicorn. The man, Alan Horn. The man on the cover of Black Belt Magazine. Oh. It's not even a joke. Cover. Cover Black Belt Magazine. Mm -hmm. Alan Horn. He'll get you a billion dollar film and then kick your ass. Yeah, kick your ass. That's what Alan Horn will do. And listen. Horn you up. <laughs> He'll horn you up. Um, listen. Like the most threatening way. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alan will horn you up. Wait a minute. That didn't come across right. <laughs> hey, ladies. But on top of that, listen, I also don't think we often talk about the Bob Chapek era. True. But listen, Disney's struggles lately too i don't believe it's a complete coincidence that part of it coincides when alan horn left disney he's now the consigliere to david zaslov over at warner brothers um, but i don't think it's a coincidence that we started to see the dip with disney films a little bit after alan horn the guy who was actually in charge of all their movies star wars pixar marvel and otherwise uh the single most gifted i think film executive of all time so uh yeah there's something to be said about that all right what's next all right. Uh, Disney suit open and shut, right? Supreme Court, 98 O'Hare versus North Lake. Just co just because it's privilege doesn't mean you can give it, uh, then later weaponize it. A privilege is unique by definition. So any talk of fairness is moot. Privileges are given everywhere. Imagine officials weaponizing them. No idea what you're even trying to talk about. You have to give us context to the discussion. I'm assuming so. this has to do with their privilege, like Disney in their like special like arrangement with the land they own there. In Florida is what I'm guessing. Oh, well, if you want to get into that political no, discussion. That, not. Let's just. It's, well, I don't even know if it's political, but even from a legal basis, it's so convoluted and huge. Well, I mean, look, here's here's what it comes down to, though, with the Disney situation in Florida. It comes down to this, and this is where it becomes problematic. Whatever you think about, and there are some like 2,000, it's not, Disney's not the only one. There's like 2,000 pieces, like areas of property in uh, in Florida that have the same or very similar kind of property uh, management rights that Disney has in their place in Florida. Don't forget that. It's not like it's just Disney. It's like, it's like 2,000 of these places. And it's not even about whether or not you, th you think Disney or places like that should have that kind of autonomy. That's a discussion worth having. That's not the problem. The problem is you have a governor of a state that decided to do this in retaliation for a company exercising its pure free speech rights to say, we don't like a law you passed. Now, whether you do like the law that the governor of Florida passed or whether you don't like the law that the governor of Florida passed is irrelevant. The relevant thing is that you cannot have people in political power that use their political station to get retribution and vengeance on anybody else in the country for simply saying, we don't agree with what you did in government. That is fucking lunacy. And anybody who defends that is a lunatic. Again, you can like the law. You cannot like the law. Fair argument and debate and good debate to be had there. I'm not judging whether the law was good or the law was bad. That's irrelevant. What you cannot have is a state which only did what it's doing because it's trying to take revenge on Disney for speaking up and saying we don't like that law. Something they are completely 100% within their rights to do. And the thing is, the governor admitted that's why he did it. He wrote a book where there's literally passages in his book talking about, we're basically, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, we're going to stick it to Disney for doing that. How dare they say they don't like my law? We'll show them. We're going to get revenge on them for doing that. Like, you cannot have elected officials in positions of political power in this country that function like that. 
it's wrong. And that's why Disney's suing him. And I got news for you. They're going to win. Disney's going to win that lawsuit because he admitted that's what he did. And it's illegal for you to do that. So again, a lot of people try to change that discussion into a discussion about whether or not the law they passed in Florida was good or not. But that's just people trying to change the subject. I'm okay if you're for that law. I'm okay if you're against that law. It's a good discussion to have. But what you can't have is an elected official in government taking retribution on anybody in the country for simply speaking up and saying, we don't agree. That's fucking dangerous and should not be a place in our thing. Now, now I can already hear everybody's trying to change topics again. Well, the law does this and it doesn't matter. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about whatever the subject matter is, an elected official in government cannot use their position of power to seek retribution against anybody else in the country for simply saying we don't agree. And anyway, that's, that's just my thought on that. All right. What's next? Okay. Switching over to Super Chats here. We've got, uh, first up, Christopher writes, the usual anti-Disney YouTubers are doing mental gymnastics to explain how uh, Mermaid's 95% audience score and projected 120 million weekend is bad for Disney. Yeah, it's really bad. Uh, listen, uh, the world of online punditry is a disgusting place now. And I say this as per somebody who's in the world of online punditry. It's gotten very, very sick. It's very sick. And it's filled with people with agendas and whatever and all this kind of stuff and bringing their political biases and in and stuff like that. And yeah, when something like, when you get a lot of people who will insist, that movie's going to suck. And then the audience rating is like 90 plus percent. They'll still find a way to spin it. The movie can open to over $100 million. And they'll still try to find a way to negatively spin it. Listen, our place, that's why, like, I'll talk about... Um, Transformers, The Last Night, right? I hate that movie. I do. But I'll always still point out, like, when I say that movie took almost a half drop from the movie before it, I'll follow it up, as I did in the show earlier, by saying, now, listen, $600 million, which is what The Last Night made. I mean, it's a lot less than the $1.1 billion the previous film made. But I said $605 million is still a solid number for a lot of films. That's still good for a lot of films. You, you shouldn't be spinning this stuff. I mean, just look at the facts Look at it in context, compare it to variables, and, and then just say, hey, that's good, that's bad, whatever. But yes, you're right. There are going to be a lot of places that have a predetermined agenda that anything Disney must suck. And listen, I say that as somebody who thinks Disney can go right fuck themselves. I am not a fan of Disney. Um, I, have quite frankly, think they're a pretty terrible company for the last couple of years. That doesn't mean I don't like some of the stuff they put out. I'll always be objective. I'll watch everything. I'll give it my fair opinion. But as somebody who thinks Disney can just go fuck themselves, there are clearly people with a real anti-Disney anti, anti uh, uh, agenda, and they wrote their headlines before the movie ever came out, and nothing is going to make them change their direction or their path. So, yeah, you know, it is what it is. It's it's a part of human nature, I suppose. It's just something that I, I really hope over the coming years that uh, film fandom matures and learns to, number one, change that, and then number two, reject that sort of mindset. But it is what it is. All right, what's next? All right, uh, first off, we just want to say thanks to Amin and Mark24 Gaming and Rampage Prediction for our Predacon for gifting memberships. Oh, thank you so much, guys. That's incredibly generous of you, dudes. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so next up we got Orange Hand. Ever play any of the Elder Scrolls games? I mean, oh, yeah. I played my... a lot of the early ones. Yeah, it's one of my um, favorite franchises. Because Daggerfall was an Elder Scrolls yeah, game, right? for sure. Uh, yeah. That was that was the first one that I played. The first Elder was Daggerfall. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with that game. It was the first truly open world game I ever played. I mean, it was buggy as hell. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it was really buggy as hell. Um, but it's, it's the game that I learned when you're in the dungeon... Just keeping along. If you get lost, just keep to the right wall. Just keep following the right wall, the right side of the wall, and eventually you'll get out. Did that work? <laughs> yeah, it always worked in the uh, in the dungeons in there. But man, I love that game. And then of course you had Skyrim. Yeah, Morrowind, Ooh. Oblivion, Skyrim. Oh, Morrowind! I played Morrowind. It's but but Elder Scrolls. They've got a. Do they have a online, online multiplayer yeah, Elder game? Yeah, Scrolls Online. I think I don't play World of Warcraft anymore, and yeah. so I've been trying to thinking about getting in, getting up on another game like that. Maybe that's one I should try. It's on Game Pass. Is it on Game Pass? Yeah, I tried it. It's the everyone's way ahead now, so it's like I gotta beat up on little things. Before I, I I try to get into it, but 
uh, I just, I like the like Oblivion, Skyrim. Like, I'm waiting for part six to come out. I'm not big on the multi, the uh, mass, the open the, world um, multiplayer yeah. online game. Yeah. I, like I, playing... I see, I really like those a lot. So, and anyway, that in a good single player game. All right. What's next? All right. We got Amin who writes percent change. Will Ferrell's character in Barbie is the same as his one from Lego movie. I mean, it's not impossible, especially since both films are Warner Brothers. It's not impossible. I mean, and his dad is supposed to be, what was his name? President Business. Mm. That would actually be kind of cool. It it could be fun. Like a crossover, like, ooh. I mean, look, I, 2% chance. 2% yeah. chance. But in a sense. But now that you met, it could be kind of like fun if they did that. It's a toy world that lives in its own world yep. within the human world. Do it. Just do it. I mean, it would be pretty Just ballsy if they did. I mean, again, I don't think that's what they're going to do, but I think that would be pretty fun if they did it. Yeah. All right, what's next? Okay. All right, so we've got Christopher Brickner who writes, did you see Guy Ritchie's second new movie, The Covenant? The reviews are great and some of the best of his career. I did. Uh, the movie's great. And, you know, you kind of could tell from the first couple of trailers, really the first trailer with Jake Gyllenhaal in there, and so, like you could tell it was probably going to be really good and that nobody would see it. And sure enough, nobody saw it. Uh, I was very, and I myself am probably... I'm part of the one who's guilty of that. I did not see it early at all. It wasn't until much later that I saw it. And, but yeah, it, it's a damn good. Not not my top three or four favorite Guy Ritchie films, but it's it's quite a good one. I enjoyed it a lot. All right, what's next? Okay, we got Donaldo Martinez who writes, in Rise of the Beast, um, do you think we will see Uni oh, yeah, uh, Unicron transform into robot mode? You know what? I don't think so. I don't think we will. I would like it. I would like to see him up there with the big giant horns and everything like that. I, I'm i going to guess we don't. But I must have been dreaming then. Why? Because I swore I saw the horns in the... I must have been dreaming. That must have been a dream. I'm not going to say anything before it looks stupid. I, I mean, Maybe I missed something in the trailer, but I'm going to guess I, I, no. I, but... swore, I swore we saw the shot. Or was that the picture of year one at CinemaCon? I forgot. Uh, I'm sorry. Year one, of course. Or uh, Transformers. One. One, one sorry. is the upcoming Transformers animated movie, but that's not coming up for a couple of years still. All right, what's next? Okay, Do uh, Donaldo is back. Who's done the craziest stunts, Jackie Chan or Tom Cruise? Jackie Chan. Yeah. Tom Cruise has done some very high-profile stunts yeah. for sure, but Jackie Chan has literally put his life on very tangibly on the line. In Multiple many, times. Oh, so many times. But by the way, listen, if you've never seen a little martial arts movie called uh, Ong Bak, um, it stars a guy by the name of Tony Jaa. Yeah, yeah. I've who, heard of it. who appeared in uh, one of the Fast and Furious movies. He was the true... Unfortunately, his career never really took off after Ong Bak. He did one or two other things. But he was really positioned to be the true spiritual successor to Jackie Chan. Because if you watch... Go on YouTube and look up some documentary stuff on the stunts in Ong Bak. Tony Jaa does all of his own stunts. And it's really insane. It's like really, really insane. All right, what's is. next? All right, we got um, Tawhidur Razak writes, Hi, John, thanks for your awesome videos and discussion. I have been a follower since 2013, and most of my movie knowledge comes from you. That said... Uh-oh, uh -oh. I hate it when they say that said. Yeah, but also it doesn't... I don't think we have... Oh, oh, there it is. It is, right. So that said, I have a question about Dolby Atmos versus IMAX. Okay, this is safe. Which is better, in your opinion, <laughs> uh, to watch a spectacle movie like Batman, Flashpoint, <laughs> and Chris... <laughs> Uh, thanks, and don't retire before 2099. You be Spider-Man 2099. You know, the question comes up a lot about, you know, AMC Dolby Prime, which is the Dolby um, cinema with Atmos and all that kind of stuff, versus IMAX. Look, the reality is you win regardless. If you, you go to see the new Spider-Man movie or the new Flash movie or the new Mission Impossible movie, and you got your choice with the, between the AMC Dolby Prime or the IMAX screen, you win. I mean, both of them are going to be great viewing experiences. So it comes down to a matter of taste. For me, it's the AMC Dolby Prime Cinemas. That's my favorite movie-going experience for a couple of reasons. One, I just find the color is richer. They have this dual, la this patented dual laser projection system in the AMC Dolby Primes that are remarkable. The deepest blacks, the richest colors, all, like just absolutely stunning. I love it. You, of course, got the Atmos sound. There's great sound in the IMAX theater, so don't get me wrong. But the but so they're very close. And then the one little thing that kind of pushes it over the edge for me is that the AMC Dolby Prime theaters have the motorized leather reclining seats. That's what gets me in it every time over yep. IMAX. 
Because when you're sitting in a movie that's two hours long, your seat matters. Yeah. And not that IMAX seats are uncomfortable. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm just saying both of them have so many positives that I just find the AMC, the, the Dolby Prime ones have a slightly more positives. And then on top of that, you add the motorized leather reclining seats. Yeah. And that just to me makes the best overall viewing experience. But that's just me. Sometimes I'll do both. Sometimes I'll start with um, Dolby. And then if I'm going to see it again, I'll, I'll go do the IMAX. Yeah, Ann and I just went to go see um, uh, Little Mermaid in an IMAX mm. thing. And it was great. It was fabulous experience. All right, what's next? Okay, Raymond Verrata, uh, actors' chairs or directors' chairs haven't changed in decades. Are they comfy? They surprisingly are. Yeah, I, are they really? Well, yeah. They keep your back straight and you're engaged in what's going on around right. you. They're like, the, you don't want them as living room chairs, but when you consider when you're on set, you're supposed to be like reading scripts or engaged in whatever. And like, you know, one of the first gifts your sister ever got me. I think I know, yeah. Was my director's yeah. chair. She bought me. Like early in our relationship, she bought me, this is when I knew she was a keeper. She bought me this director's chair with my name embroidered yeah. uh, in the chair. And it's like, if I didn't already, I'm pretty sure now I love you. It's, <laughs> it's one of the best things. I still have it in my office. Yeah, It's still sitting in my, I, I, I love this thing. Yeah, I used it on set of my movies. that thing around for a little while. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. As many times as you moved or moved around. All right, what's next? Okay, we've got, uh, we just asked that, Harv's K, a uh, neat detail from the new Barbie trailer. Barbie floats down from the balcony because kids don't use the stairs. And Oh, in the dollhouse, they just move their dolls from one floor to another during play. Yeah, she wouldn't fit. Um, and on top of that, they don't really show you enough in the trailer. But you know how she says, you know, oh, now all these weird things happening. Like, I, you know, I fell down and cold shower. Well, what they didn't really show you enough of is in the extended footage they showed us at CinemaCon. Mm -hmm. When she takes a shower, no water is coming out of the shower. She just stands under it doing that. And then so when she says, all of a sudden, it's a cold shower. So she walks in the bathroom, steps into the shower with no water coming out and goes, ah, and jumps back and stuff. It's, it's actually pretty funny the way they do that. But yes, that's a, a really good observation because you never could have her walk down the stairs. She always had to come down off the roof. It's a good observation. All right, what's next? Kyle Schneider writes, June is pretty stellar. I got my fingers crossed that all the big releases will be serious bangers. Maybe even uh, Ruby Gilman will be good. Maybe not. Which one's that? Yeah, I'm not sure. What is it called? Ruby Gilman. I can't I can't remember. I, I can't remember. Look, excuse me. So what comes out in June? We got Transformers. We've got uh, uh, Flash. Across the Spider-Verse. Is that technically June? June You're right. Second. It is June. Across the Spider-Verse. Elemental. Elemental's June? Is it? Oh. Nice. So. When's Oppenheimer? Or is that like July or August? Uh, let me look up. Either way. Yeah, you're right. June. Elemental. June. Oh, and uh, teen Elemental's June 16th. Teenage Kraken. Uh, look, I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of the stuff they showed us at CinemaCon I really liked. Oh, you, you actually liked the preview for this movie? I did not. Oh, yeah. No, no. This is one I of the things either. that they showed that I'm like, why did this get made? I, I don't think this looks any good, but... <laughs> but hey, if it Hey, has I didn't think Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse looked any good. And but... It it also has a following, right? It's supposed to be a book or as some, far as some I very know, popular. Yeah. So I hope anyone who's a fan of it does enjoy it. No, I, I it hope looks, it's great. It looks stupid, and I hope it fails. <laughs> uh, whatever. Hopefully it's great. <laughs> All right, what's next? All right, Sam Fisher writes, you mentioned the OG TMNT comic in the podcast. Have you read the TMNT comic? I was looking at this. The last Ronin that came out last year, it's Super Dark Series. You were looking at this? Yeah. It's called The Last Ronin. I'll yeah, bring up an they're, image. they're actually starting to make action figures. I, somebody wrote in about that, I think a few months ago, and I'm like, oh my God, really? I got to read that. And I totally forgot about it. So thank you for putting that back on my wrist. So no, I've not seen it yet myself, but if it gets back to the spirit of the original black and whites, I'm, I'm there for it. I'll check it out for sure. All right. What's okay. next? Uh, Josh Becker writes, scene, 70, scene 72, 2023, new releases for- Wow. Uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy three is number one. I'll tell you what, yes, Guardians sir. of the Galaxy is not my number one, but it's right up there. I still think, as of this moment, now, well, you know what? My favorite movie of the year so far is Flash. I, I shouldn't count it yet because it's not in theaters yet, but but we've seen it. Yeah. Uh, I think Air is my second favorite one. I think John Wick is probably my third, or Guardians of the Galaxy might be third. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 for me is either the third or fourth, but there have been a lot of movies that I really like. That. See, that cover looks banging. I love that cover. They're all, they all look oh, yeah, pretty you're, dope. You're a little tough turtle. That look looks pretty... like the original 
uh, Kevin Eastman run of the black and white turtle. Yeah. And comics. this is Kevin Eastman on this. So, oh, does he do this one too? Yeah. Sign me up. Sign me up. I'll read those, and it'll make me lament the garbage that we've got now. Hey, maybe but... we'll get like spinoffs for this or something. And they I would love it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, All right. Uh, Josh Becker's back. I now have tickets to see Spider Verse three times next nice. week. Nice. I'm married and I have kids, man. I can't be doing those kinds of things. <laughs> I think what makes them so special is that uh, there's so much detail that rewatching them is easy. I've seen the first one so many times. I mean, it, it is seriously. I remember when the pandemic was going on. Ann and I went to the drive-in twice just so we can watch Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I've watched it many times at home. That movie is infinitely rewatchable. Like, even some of the best movies are not necessarily the most rewatchable and not necessarily the best movies and not necessarily the most rewatchable ones are necessarily the best ones either. Like, I think Zoolander I can watch every day for the rest of my life and be happy. But some of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is so rewatchable. I can watch it every freaking day, man. All right, listen, we still have more questions to get to, but before we do those, we're going to take just a quick break here and thank the two sponsors of today's episode, our friends at Helix and Mint Mobile. This video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Their Memorial Day sale is running now, and it's a great time to upgrade your mattress. You can get 25% off your purchase for a limited time. Check out the Helix site for more details. Guys, Helix Sleep offers the best premium mattresses, custom fit to your needs, conveniently shipped right to your door. And in case you're not 100% sure which mattress is best for you, Helix Sleep's quiz matches you to the perfect mattress based on your body type and sleep preferences. Guys, you know Ann and I have had our Helix mattress for almost a year and even when we go to Las Vegas and stay in these beautiful hotel rooms we can't wait to get home to get a great night's sleep in our Helix mattress. The mattress comes rolled up in a box and is easy to set up and there's even a hundred night sleep trial to test the mattress out to ensure that you love it. And good news Helix is having a great Memorial Day sale that goes from May 15th to June 4th. Visit helixsleep.com slash campia to get 25% off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows during their Memorial Memorial Day sale running now for a limited time. We want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, your utility bills and favorite streaming services, inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, there's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It's Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. You guys know that ever since I switched to Mint Mobile, I've been saving almost 70% a month over my my old phone plan. For people looking for extra savings this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. And thank you to our friends at Mint Mobile and Helix, the best night's sleep I've ever had, guys, for sponsoring this episode. Make sure you check out their links and promo codes down in the description below. All right, guys, with that down, let's get back to the questions you guys have sent in, shall we? Jonathan, what we got next? Joseph Stewart writes, my kids' friends say Spider-Verse looks better than The Little Mermaid. Do you think interest from kids will spark more revenue for Spider-Man? Thanks. Hard to say. I mean, look, Little Mermaid's good. But it's not going to be a top 10 movie of the year, right? It's, it's, I just found it very, very charming, uh, enjoyable, entertaining little film. Had a good time with it. I do think Spider-Man uh, Across Spider-Verse will probably be better. But listen, this is the great thing about the movies. A rising tide raises all ships, right? If you got people and families going to a movie to see Little Mermaid and they have a blast, guess what? I think that family is now more likely to go to another movie, a.k.a. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse or Across the Spider-Verse, just to say. Um, I mean, that's the hope. That's the idea. And so uh, we'll see if it can actually, those films can help each other. All right, what's next? 
Okay, Lavartov writes, John, can I recommend an artist? My yes. favorite artist is a Chinese Icelandic singer. Her name is Laufey. Uh, trust John, her voice is mesmerizing. Laufey. Laufey. Wasn't that the name of the frost giant king in the first uh, Thor movie? Wasn't that, the, the, wasn't that the king of the frost giants, Laufey? Oh, I don't know. Um, died, anyway, right? uh, listen, died. you had me at, what was it? Asian Iceland? Yeah, uh, Chinese I, I, and Icelandic. Chinese Icelandic? You had me at Chinese Icelandic. Oh, boy. Right there. I, I can just see visions of Eurovision in my yeah, head now. Euro. I'll check it out. Thank you for the recommendation. The York is from All Iceland. All right, what's next? Um, we've got uh, Talking Entertainment with Josie. Going to see The Room for the first time tomorrow night. Nice. The way is meant to be seen on the big screen with QA Q&A after with uh, Greg Sestera. Oh, wow, Sestera. So that's the co-star of yeah. the movie. Uh, besides, what's the guy's name again? Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau. Uh, it's the other guy in it. Listen, uh, it is, I don't know if you live in Los Angeles or not, but that's a Los Angeles rite of passage going to one of the midnight screenings of The Room. Still to this day, they still do it. And uh, you got to go to at least one. That's cool that you're going to one with the Q&A. That's awesome. All right, what's next? Okay, we've got our, uh, Orlando Orego who writes, glad to hear good reviews for the next couple of movies, hoping for a good box office numbers in the next couple of weekends. See, this is the thing too. This is why, you know, a, a reason a lot of people will say, you know, Top Gun Maverick kind of saved the movies. Uh, before that was Spider-Man No Way Home. But still, is because you got to get people back into the movie theater and you got to give them a great experience when they come. The more great experiences you give, the more likely people are coming back, right? It's not rocket science. I mean, that's pretty simple. A fourth grader can figure that out. So that's why I've been so excited that we've had a couple of great comic book movies in a row. We had Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and we've got Flash and hopefully Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is going to be three, but not just the comic book genre, but all movies right? If people, if families can go to Little Mermaid and have a good time and watch Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse and have a good time. And they saw Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and they had a good time and they watch Mission Impossible and have a good time. All of it works together as various pieces of the puzzle, putting back together to get the movie industry back to the place that it was in 2019 before the pandemic hit. The, the theater industry has recovered a lot, but we're still experiencing the effects of the pandemic a little bit. And the more we get great movies in theaters, the more we get people having great experiences when they go, the more and more we'll get back to that. So yes, it, hopefully, not only can the movies be great, but hopefully they can start having even better and better box office results. All right, what's next? Okay, Orlando is back. Uh, hey, John, do you enjoy going to the movie theaters by yourself or do you feel it's better with family and friends? I don't know if this is a response to that. But it's funny because, first of all, I'll let you guys know, we have a newsletter. Uh, let's go to my to the NDI for a second. Oh, okay. We have a newsletter. Um, if you didn't know about this, we have a newsletter that goes out every morning, Monday through Friday, uh, to the subscribers of the newsletter, where we, you know, we give some information, we talk about, you know, the topics we're going to be covering on the channel, we give some announcements, and I always put in like a little blog post called John's Thoughts. And today's happened to be going to the movies alone. That was the topic of today's uh, of today's uh, kind of blog post I put in the newsletter. By the way, you can go and subscribe to the newsletter. It's totally free. It gets delivered to your inbox every morning. Uh, if you go into the community tab of our YouTube channel, you'll see that I have a post in there saying, hey, guys, here's a link to the new newsletter. If you go to the newsletter, there'll be a subscribe button at the bottom. Just click on that, and it'll be delivered to your inbox. Anyway, what I basically say in this blog post is there's nothing better than going to the movies with friends and family. It's the best thing. Shared experiences. Wonderful. But I still enjoy going to the movies by myself when I need to. Listen, I need to see a lot of movies. And Anne isn't always available to go. And the other people in my life can't always just be available at the drop of a hat to go to a movie. So sometimes I end up going to a movie by myself. And you know what? It's still great. I still love hearing the laughter of the other movie fans, hearing the gasping of the other movie fans. I, I love feeling the reactions of the theater. And I have a great time watching a movie, even if I'm by myself. I, I, I give this equation here. If you're going to have a great filet mignon, it's best if you can eat it and share it with somebody. Sure. But if I'm by myself in the restaurant and I just got that filet mignon, guess what? I'm still going to enjoy it. So by all means, if you got a movie you want to see and it's like, ah, oh, crap, Ted's got to watch his kids tonight or, oh, no, Marty's got a... Marty's got a party. Got a party. Marty's just got a party. Who cares? Don't let that keep you from going to see your movie. Go see your movie. I, I am 100% all for it. It's better when you go with friends and family. For sure, it's better. But it's still great when you go by yourself. I have a good time by myself when I go. So, yes. All right. What's next? 
Sam Fisher writes, I've been recently getting back into anime. Recommendation, Oshinoko. It takes a hard, unflinching look at Japan's entertainment industry. I'm the wrong guy. I wish Chris was here because Chris is way more tuned into the anime stuff. I like, listen, I'm into some of the big classical titles from anime, but I'm not really an anime guy per se. I did try to give My Hero Academia a shot. I watched the first season, couldn't handle the lead character anymore. Why? The lead character who I talked like this and it was on screaming and crying and blah. Like I just, after a whole season of that, uh, young Midoriya, I, I just I couldn't take it anymore. He's just I, excited. I just couldn't take it anymore. He's so excited. Watch the whole first season, which is too bad because I love the All Might character. I thought All Might was great, but I just couldn't take it anymore. Anyway, <laughs> that's so sad. <laughs> um, so, but thank you for the recommendation, man. I appreciate that. All right, what's next? All right, two Wongs make a right. Movie Pass is back, and I'm considering giving them a shot. You know what? It's Listen, when they first announced that MoviePass was coming back, a lot of people were angry. But remember, this is a totally different ownership now. This is the original owner of MoviePass, back when MoviePass was a good, legitimate business. Then they got bought by Helios and Matheson, who turned it into a giant extortion scam and ran it out of business and ran it into the ground. But now the original owner has it back and is trying to get back. And listen, in a world that we live in now as movie fans, where we have great options like AMC A-List, Regal's loyalty program, Cinemark's loyalty program, the idea of having a card that can get you into multiple theaters, I think is really interesting. And I am keeping an eye on MoviePass because I think it, look, it could fall into the ground again, yes. But I think it's got some potential. And some possibilities of some upside. So I'm going to keep my eyes on it. Think, I think it's good that it's back. So we'll see. All right. What's next? Okay. Uh, Lavartov's back and just saying that you can listen to Laufey, um in your car ride home. I still just think about the King of the Frost Giants, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. All right. What's next? All right. Uh, John Redcorn writes, what are, your, what are the chances for an Ant-Man 4? And if there isn't one, what is the future for Scott Lang? Quantum Mania was garbage, but I still like the character. I love the character. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Uh, Peyton Reed, who directed all three Ant-Man movies, I think Peyton Reed is a wonderful director. Uh, I think Ant-Man 3 was a bad day at the office. But I, I love Ant-Man 1, and I really like Ant-Man 2. Not quite as much as 1, but I, I still like it a lot. I think there is still definitely a place for Ant-Man in the MCU. An Ant-Man 4 is a tall order. <laughs> with the results they just got for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It's a tall order, but I would totally still love to see Ant-Man in the MCU as a part of other films. All right, what's next? All right, uh, Bill's HQ writes, John, I love Air. Can't get out of my mind that uh, the thought that it takes place in the same universe as Winning Time. Really <laughs> excited for Winning Time Season 2. Well, it's all based in reality, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, Winning Time, God, that... Oh, I love that show so much. John C. Riley as Dr. Buss slayed. Yep. All the cast did. The guy who played Magic, amazing. The guy who played Kareem, amazing. Um, uh, well, what's the name of the actor? Um, uh, the one who played Jerry West? Yeah. Uh, uh, Why am I freezing on his name? Uh, J J J Jason. Jason. Patrick? That might be it. Is it Jason Patrick? Yeah, let, let me look it up. I, anyway, the, him playing Jerry West might have stole the show, but... That show is so good. And yes, Air is wonderful. Air is so good. It is. Oh, it's Jason Clark. Jason Patrick yeah. is Aquaman's brother, I think. Uh, no, Jason yeah. Clark. Patrick Wilson is Aquaman's brother. So who's Jason Patrick? Or did I just make that name up? You made that name up? I, yeah, <laughs> Jason I just... Patrick, if you're out there, shout out. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, both those shows are great, though. Uh, Air is my number two favorite movie of the year so far. And yeah, winning time is just incredible. I can't wait for season two. All right. What's next? Okay. Uh, we've got uh super, super sane. 13 writes, uh, Hey John, I've not seen any transformers former films since the original. Well, you're fortunate. Do I need to see any others before the new one to understand it? Probably just Bumblebee, right? I think just Bumblebee. Cause I like, I've had people tell me that technically speaking, Bumblebee is a reboot mm -hmm. of the universe even though it's extremely similar to the other ones, but Bumblebee is awesome. So I would say the only one you really need to watch is probably Bumblebee. Yeah, I think, you, and by the way, you should watch Bumblebee anyway, because it's favor. wonderful. Yeah. It's a wonderful movie. All right, what's next? Yeah, I haven't seen uh, Air, uh, Winning Time yet, but I- Really? Oh, dude, you would love it. Yeah, and I was only familiar with like the player cast. I didn't realize all, like Adrian Brody, Jason Segel, like- Oh, Sally Adrian Fee Brody as- um, Michael oh, Chiklis. As yeah, Pat, Pat Riley. Riley. 
Adrian Brody is Pat Riley. Oh, rules man. in this. Bring that show yeah. back. Oh. Wow. All right. Okay. Um, uh, nerds and Nerds and Normies writes, Hail the 199. I don't know what that means. I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, Bruce Wayne Brady, <laughs> the writer of the Book of Eli, Gary wow, Witta, like <laughs> was writing a sequel to The Last Starfighter. Okay, yeah, but here's the problem. First of all, if you were to say, what is the perfect movie to remake? The Last Starfighter is it. Um, I have a couple of criteria for what makes an ideal remake. One is that it's a movie that the majority of the current movie-going audience hasn't seen. A lot of people have not seen The Last Starfighter. Two, it's a story where the where the it's a movie where the story is still applicable today. The story of The Last Starfighter is actually more applicable today with the popularity of video games than it was when it first came out. And the third criteria is that it's a movie that could stand to benefit from modern filmmaking technology. The Last Starfighter? Of course. It is the perfect movie to remake. But the problem is I have been covering stories for years, going back to the AMC days. Mm -hmm. I've been covering stories for years about, ooh, they're saying they're getting close to doing The Last Starfighter. I would love it, but I, I don't believe it. Like, I'm not going to believe it until something actually happens. When they say, guess what? A studio just greenlit it. I don't care if they write 50 scripts. Until a studio steps up and says, hey, we at Paramount have just greenlit a new Last Starfighter, or any studio, it doesn't matter. When that happens, I'll get excited, and I will get excited because that's a perfect movie to remake, but I'm not going to be excited until that happens. All right, what's next? We've got CJ Rebirth. Hope Haley Steinfeld comes back to Transformers. I doubt she will. Uh, she her Her... her star has just gotten bigger and bigger and i think she'd be more and more expensive i would love to see it but i don't expect it all right what's next chef rigo chef rigo john hey john how was the amc in puente hills i'm considering checking it out this sunday you know what it was a nice theater the mall is a fucking walking dead yeah it's been tumbleweeds weeds for the longest time it like uh, we couldn't believe like ann and i went a little bit early to get something to eat and we we're running a little bit later than we thought so we thought you know what we'll eat at the We'll eat at the food court in the yeah. mall. Food court in the mall. The Not ideal. Court. The pood. We're going to go there, right? Go get that pood. So we go in. And by the way, this mall is the legendary, iconic place where they shot that big, famous scene from Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. right? this, that's the place. That's, where, that's the parking lot that they shot Back to the Future in. Anyway. So we walk in. First of all, we're outside the mall. It's like, is this mall even open? Like, we didn't see wow. anybody. <laughs> we walk in the mall and we're, we're, we're in this hallway and it's like all the shops on both sides of us were all boarded up. <laughs> and then we saw a couple of open stores like, okay, so let's go to the food court. We walk around the corner and get to the food court. It's like 5.30 in the afternoon. All the store, all the restaurants in the food court were closed. Oh, now, so I don't know if they're- like The Last it, of Us. Yeah, I was going to say it's like The Last of yeah. Us. Yeah, it was, the, it was the mall from The Fucking Last of Us. Right. They must have shot that <laughs> scene in The Last of Us in this thing. It was dead now. But the theater itself- was actually pretty nice. Pretty nice theater. I enjoyed it. Had a good time. Did Ghost run it? How'd you get in? Yes, yeah, all ghosts. No. It was like uh, self-serve theater. <laughs> but I will say this. AMC has the ability at, at, at uh, several of their locations, including Puente Hills, that on the AMC app, you can put in your order for your food in advance, oh, right. and they will deliver it to your seat. Mm -hmm. So we ordered about an hour in advance, and so all we wanted, we just ordered some popcorn um, and, uh, so, and a soda, Okay. right? And it said, would you like your popcorn buttered? I'm like, yes. Great. So at 6, 10 p.m., they deliver it to our seat. Okay. First off, the soda, It, I mean, it was flatter than your 10th grade girlfriend. It was flat as hell. Like, I took one sip of it, and it tasted like dirty water. No carbonation whatsoever. <laughs> so what Dying. it means was... Did I touch a nerve there, Ray? <laughs> did, I, did I touch a nerve? Sometimes you say things and I'm like... <laughs> what? what? What's the problem? Uh, there should be an exit sign somewhere. Mm. I'll light it up. <laughs> so the, the, the soda was totally flat. So all I could deduce was that they poured it an hour earlier when I ordered it. And it was just sitting there and it got totally flat. I know. And then I ordered um, buttered popcorn. So remember, we're in a dark theater with mm -hmm. no tables, dark theater. So they bring me a bag of popcorn and two plastic cups 
filled with their liquid butter substance. Heck yeah, it's man. Like, how am I supposed service. to put this on in here? I got no napkins. I got no table to put the bag down on. Mm. It, so I would just say it was a really, the movie theater is very nice and I enjoyed it, but I would recommend just go to the concession line and get your concessions. Dang. Don't, don't order it to your seat. Chef Rigo got his money's worth on That's that right. answer. <laughs> that was like 20 minutes. <laughs> All right. What's next? Cutter Hale writes, saw The Departed for the first time today and loved it. Going to see The Machine in two hours, and I'm so excited. Ooh. A lot of good movies coming soon. First of all, The Departed uh, is my personal favorite Martin Scorsese movie. Um, it's a remake of a my all-time favorite cop movie called Infernal Affairs. Um, we just had lunch. Me and Ray had yeah. lunch with my wife, Anne, and our buddy, Ryan. And my, our buddy, Ryan, just went to go see The Machine yesterday. And I'm like, how was it? He goes, mm, not so good. <laughs> so I'm like, meh. All right. All right. I, I haven't looked up the other reviews for it. I'm actually, I want to go see the new Robert De Niro comedy. That's actually getting some pretty decent reviews. I want to go see that, but I, I'm not, yeah. I'm, the tr it's unfortunate. It's just, I, I think the comedian's very funny, but yeah. I don't think the marketing department did a very good job putting the trailers together because it doesn't look that interesting. Let's just hope it's not an Easter Sunday situation. Oh God, that you're, was you're so bad. You're a big fan of the comedian and then... That was one of the worst movies I've seen in the last couple of years was Joe Coy's Easter Sunday. And I'm a huge Joe Coy fan, but I don't know. All right, what's next? All right, King Daddy Goat writes, the Endgame Theories video randomly came on today. Pure nostalgia, boys. Oh, wow. You remember when you thought Endgame was going to end the, with Tony's wedding? Well, it sort of was a wedding. I mean, there was a lot of people who thought that. <laughs> in um, an in a way, I remember that when Endgame was coming out, we did a big... Um, Final theories before Endgame came out about what, theorizing what's going to happen in it and all this kind of stuff. And we used to do that for a lot of the big movies at the time. Um, yeah, I, that, I those are good days. I didn't know that was a theory that they were going to end with a wedding for... Well, because remember in Infinity War, right? Right. They're talking about the wedding. They've oh, got the right, wedding right. coming up. You know, Wong is like, uh, Wong, you're invited to the wedding and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and so there was a theory, a solid theory, that, that will probably end with Tony and Pepper finally getting married. Oh, wow. Uh, they, they got but you know, they for. <laughs> all they got was the till death do us part. And, uh, that's, that's yeah. what part of them at the end. All right. What's next? Empire strikes back street boys. Uh, within the first literal second of the final flash trailer, the, fo the camera focuses on his feet, his golden boots. Golden boot! golden that's boots. why the trailer is so awesome. The awesome, the trailer is awesome. I I'll be honest with you. I've watched the movie. I did not notice golden boots. I mean, they might have been gold. I'm not saying they weren't. I'm just saying I didn't even notice the color of the it boots. A golden film. Because that's what will make it an Oscar contender. Golden boots. Oh, God. All right, what's next? John Redcorn wrote, writes, uh, worst film of the year so far. I can't even remember what came out this year. I, I, I'm terrible what with... What did we... Dude, you just you were just talking about a horrible film. Which day. one? I'll have to think of it. Just go, just go on to the next one. I, but you did say that you didn't like something recently. Well, I am in the Wasp Quantum Mania. I didn't like. I, I don't know that I'd call that the worst movie of the year so far. I mean, I'd have to look at a list for. That's the thing. I never have dates saved in my head. I'd have to actually look at a list in front of me of all the movies that came out this year for me to, so because the only one I can remember off the top of my head right now is Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. I'll say Ant Man well, and the Wasp Quantum Mania. You also that. hated that comedian's. Uh... Uh, I think Joe Coy was last year, though. Oh, was it last year? Mm, I think Easter Sunday was last year. I mean, oh, Ray, you can look I, that up would the make sense, I guess. You can look at the release yeah. date. If it if it was this year, that's the worst movie of the year so far. But I, I think it was in 2022 that that came out. Yeah, I'm you're not right. Sure. Yeah. All right. What's All right. next? Uh, Luke uh, Babuk writes, uh, "What I'd give for another good Transformers movie." Marvel fans complain when they get two average ones in a row, but come on, man, Transformers fans got it rough. That's the problem when you get a little spoiled Spoily. as a fan base, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I remember talking to my buddy, uh, Paul Lenz, uh, former director at Lucasfilm. Um, he was the, uh, he worked with me for a while. And uh, he, he's the founder of Red 5 Comics as well. Paul Lenz, go look him up. And I remember one day, this is years ago, complaining loudly about the dry stretch his Edmonton Oilers were on. Mm. Edmonton Oilers. Feel now, pain. if you're asking yourself, John, I, I don't follow a lot of hockey, but uh, aren't those the Edmonton Oilers? Is that the same team that had 
the the that that kid the what's his name Wayne Gretzky mm. and Mark Messier wow and Yari Curry and Grant Fuhrer and Andy Moog and on and on and on and on and didn't they win like five Stanley Cups in six years yeah that's them that's them yeah and I had to sit and listen to my buddy complain because he had a couple of dry years. <laughs> And I'm like, you do realize, you son of a bitch. You should have bought him flowers and everything. That my Toronto Maple Leafs have never even been to the Stanley Cup Finals in my entire lifetime. Do not. See, but that's the problem. When you as a fan base get spoiled. So you're right. I, 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 can get, I get it when people who are like, look at MCU fans going, man, the MCU isn't what it used to be. And then you get like Transformers fans. It's like, boo fucking who? <laughs> like crime here river yeah i get it we get a little yeah. bit spoiled as fans I, sometimes i get that analogy of sports too because our fans oh, yeah we, we lose two games we're doomed what's happening fire the manager <laughs> it's like we literally lead the league <laughs> yeah. we're, like, we're in first place what are you talking about <laughs> yep yeah oh, there you go uh and then king tannic uh, gives us uh, gives us some support thank you thank you king tantic and guys that's the hour mark that'll do it for us today here on Open Mic, thank you so much for joining us here today on this little odyssey we've gone down. Big special thank you to all you guys who sent in those questions, number one, because you gave us great fun things to talk about. But number two, whether you sent in a tip question or a super chat, you supported our channel and all of us involved with the channel. Thank you guys so very much for that support. And guys, it's Friday. So go and have yourselves a magnificent weekend, would you? Filled with fun or relaxation or a little bit of both. And don't forget, this Sunday... We're going to be doing, for those of you who do see Little Mermaid, we're going to do an open spoiler discussion Sunday afternoon. So if you're interested in that, come on back and join us for that. Otherwise, we'll see you back here again on the channel on Monday. We'll have new videos going up. We'll have a new podcast episode. We'll have open mic. It'll be a great time. For those of you who are channel members, don't forget, in about a half hour, we're going to be having a channel members. Hey, and a couple of you are brand new channel members, I noticed. Mm -hmm. We have four new channel members, according to the analytics here uh come by and join us at 4 30 for our channel members open town hall i hope to Heck see you yeah. guys there so for myself raymond aura jonathan <laughs> voico wow. my name's john campia and until next time my friends <laughs> wow i'm not gonna say what i was about to say so i'll just say bye-bye <laughs>